Welcome back friends to the Portraits of Fame channel. Today, we're going to talk about a song that was a huge success and we're sure you've already heard it, because it was a resounding success in the 70s. amazing thing is that it managed to reach the top of the charts in both the decades but believe it or not the original version of this song might not be what you think it is let's find out together the story behind shocking blues song venus how it was created what led to the band's breakup and much more But before we continue, I recommend you to subscribe and activate the bell so you don't miss out on valuable information like this today, okay? Today we are going to know everything behind this wonderful song by Shocking Blue. This great band that formed in 1967 in the Netherlands, its founding members were Robbie Van Leeuwen, Klaas Van Der Waal, Cornelius Van Der Beek and Fred DeWile. Fred was the lead vocalist, but unfortunately he had to leave the band just a year after its formation as he was drafted to serve military service. In mid-1968, the remaining band members were invited to a party honoring another Dutch rock band called Golden Earring. During the party, they came across a talented girl who was singing with the group that livened up the party. This young woman had a beautiful and impressive voice. At that time, the young singer with real name Maria Elizabeth Ender, better known by her artistic name, Mariska Vares, was only 21 years old. Mariska was born on October 1, 1947 in The Hague, Netherlands. From a young age, she showed a keen interest in music, and at age 16, she started singing in a local band. In 1968, she joined the band Shocking Blue, which had formed the year before. With his powerful and captivating voice, the band quickly became a hit in Holland and other European countries. She was an exotic and unique beauty, as she was descended from Hungarian gypsies and with a simply harmonic and powerful voice. During a performance in which Mariska sang with her band, the Shocking Blue representative was impressed with her talent and approached her for a chat after the show. After talking for a long time, he managed to convince her to join the group. However, this decision was not very well received by the band's lead vocalist, Fred DeWile. For a brief period of time, the band consisted of five members, but when Fred was drafted into the army, he had to leave the band. So, Morisco was the only vocalist of the group. A few months later, in early 1969, the band's guitarist Robbie Van Leeuwen was going through some old records when he found a song he really liked. It was the song The Banjo Song by the American trio The Big Three, composed of one woman and two men. Oh, oh, Susanna, don't you cry. The lead singer of this trio was Ellen Naomi Cohen, who would later become famous worldwide as Cass Elliot or Mama Cass from the amazing group The Mamas and The Papas. In a moment of inspiration, Robbie took the melody of the banjo song and created new lyrics about Venus, the goddess of love. Before that, the band had only had a few moderate successes in the Netherlands, but with this new song, their fame has spread all over the world. In the summer of 1969, the song was released in the Netherlands and reached number three on the charts. A few months later, it was released in the United States and entered the Billboard list at number 77 in December 1969. Quickly, the song began to climb the charts and became a smash hit on February 7, 1970, reaching to the first place. In addition to the United States, the song also reached number one in nine other countries, including Switzerland, Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Belgium, France, Italy, South Africa, and Spain. Shocking Blue became a worldwide phenomenon and Venus remains the most successful and famous song to come out of the Netherlands. However, despite this incredible success, the band unfortunately never managed to release another song that came close, even, to the popularity of Venus. They had some other minor hits such as Never Marry a Railroad Man in the year 1970, Blossom Lady in 1971 when I was all alone. 
and Ink Pot in 1972. Although they sold over 13 million records worldwide and produced songs of great quality, the band ended up collapsing in 1973. The creator of Venus, Robbie, became frustrated with the lack of success of the band and decided to leave it. A very sad end for a band that got stuck in time and could no longer get great results without new weight releases and world music. The other members of Shocking Blue tried to move on after Robbie left, but just a year later, in 1974, the band broke up for good. Mariska decided to pursue a solo career, but sadly, she passed away in 2006 due to cancer when she was only 59 years old. The other members of the band have gone on to different musical projects over the years, and currently, only Robbie, the founder and writer of their biggest hit, is still alive. After 12 years of the original release, in 1981, the song Venus time, she was part of the pop medley of Stars on 45, a musical project originating in the Netherlands, which became extremely popular in Europe and the United States, mixing and recreating songs from the 60s and 70s. This medley caused many old songs to re-enter the US and UK charts. About five years after the success of Stars on 4, 5, and 17 years after its original release, Venus has returned to dominate music charts worldwide thanks to the modernized and danceable version of the English female trio Bananarama. These three girls started their career singing in bars, parties, and nightclubs. It was during one of these performances that they were discovered by Sex Pistols drummer Paul Cook, who produced their first single, a Hawaiian and version of Black Blood, sung on Swahili. After recording that first single, which had a tropical vibe, they decided to name the band Bananarama, mixing the word banana with the title of a song they loved called Pajamarama by Roxy Music. They say you have a secret life, made sacrifice your key to paradise. Bananarama, an English female trio, first achieved success in 1982 with the song Really Saying Something, which reached number 5 in the UK charts. In 1983, Shy Boy reached number 4, and Na Na Hey Hey reached number 5. That same year, Cruel Summer peaked at number 4 in the UK, and in early 1984, that same song became his first hit in the US. This song was used on the soundtrack of the movie, Karate Kid. It was at this time that the girls started to sing Shocking Blue's Venus in their performances, although they never officially recorded it. Finally, in 1986, they decided to include their version of the song on their third album, True Confessions. Although their representatives initially disagreed with this decision, the girls persisted and turned out to be right, as their version of Venus became the most successful song of their career and one of the most memorable of the 80s. Tell me and leave in the comments, which is your favorite version? The song Venus reached number one on the Billboard list in the United States on September 6th, 1986, in addition to having reached the top of the charts in other countries, such as Australia, Finland, New Zealand, Switzerland, and South Africa. It also reached number two in Germany and entered the top ten in several other countries, including the United Kingdom, Austria, Belgium, Canada, France, the Netherlands, Norway, Sweden, and Spain. The success of this song is unquestionable. Since its release in 1969, Venus has delighted audiences around the world and for generations. The shocking blue and bananarama versions were the most successful in terms of sales, but even so, 
Many other artists recorded the song in their careers. Among them we have the Welshman Tom Jones, the renowned Italian singer Mina, the American of Latin origin Jennifer Lopez, and even a Mexican group called Las Moscas, where they made adaptations of the song, being a very popular version in several countries of the Latin America. Did you imagine that this song had so many versions? The song Venus is a beautiful song full of love. It has been used in countless movies, commercials, and TV shows over the past 50 years, confirming that her fame is far from fading. Moreover, many artists continue to make covers and adaptations of this incredible success. Interestingly, in an episode of the popular Netflix miniseries The Queen's Gambit, the main character, Beth Harmon, dances to Venus while watching a video of Shocking Blue performing the song. However, we have a misconception here. This scene appears in the sixth episode, but the plot of the series takes place in 1967 and the song was released in 1969. Therefore, it is impossible that this happened at that time. Either way, Venus remains a song that transcends generations and cultural boundaries. That was the wonderful story of the Shocking Blue Band and the song Venus, a phenomenal success. I hope you enjoyed getting to know this precious music more deeply, remembering that we have other amazing stories here on the channel. Well, if you found it interesting and like the information, then take a few seconds of your time to share it with your friends and family. And don't forget that here you'll find news and stories about famous people and celebrities. A big hug. Until the next video, bye bye.